Good morning and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Once again, it is our privilege to learn the Torah portion this week with our dear friend Rabbi Hillel Silverman. Good morning, Hillel. How are you doing today? Good morning. Shabbat Shalom. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. So this week we read Parshat Korach, about all about the revolt of Korach. So tell us what to look for in the Parsha this week. All right, I will. I'll, in a moment, if you'll permit me to digress for a moment, on a personal note, I still have a memory of last Sunday, Father's Day. Uh, I'm sure that you enjoyed your celebrations of Father's Day, but for me, it was most unique. It was the first time in 40 years that I've been in Los Angeles with my family on Father's Day. And they all came out, my children, my grandchildren, six of the seven grandchildren, three of my children and their spouses. It was unique because we were not in our home. We were in our driveway. And we were all sitting there with masks on our faces. And we were separated by at least six feet, one from the other. And we enjoyed it, and we had a wonderful time. Uh, my three, my two-year-old granddaughter was the hit of the gathering. She was running around in the driveway, entertaining everybody. It was just a marvelous Father's Day. And now to talk about this morning's sedra, Korach. It's a very interesting sedra, and Korach was a most unusual person not beloved by the Jewish people. As a matter of fact, no Jewish child that I ever know bears the name of Korach because he was an enemy of the Jewish people, just as there's no uh, Jewish child named Haman or Nebuchadnezzar, so too uh, there's nobody named a Korach. Uh, and we read about him uh, tomorrow, uh, this morning in the Sedra. He was a prominent person, but he was a very, very difficult individual. He was a rebel. He revolted against Moses and revolted against Aaron. He criticized them. He criticized them and wanted to take over. Uh, he was a Levite, and he said to Moses, uh, 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 all people are holy. We are holy also. I would like to take over the Levites, and Moses was infuriated. Moses, the, the Bible says, tomorrow morning fell on his face, and he said, is it enough that you are Levites, and now you want to take over the kahuna? And then we read of a second revolt, two and a half tribes, Zatan and Aviran, and 250 men. Now, who was Zatan? Zatan was the descended from Reuben, who was the firstborn of Jacob. And his complaint and his criticism was Moses. Uh, he wanted to take over the leadership of the Jewish people. And again, Moses didn't know how to cope with it, how to cope with these uh, two different parties. Uh, probably uh, they were two different historical episodes, two different uh, uh, events which occurred in Jewish history, and they were combined together in this story. Uh, it's not important, but uh, uh, Moses turned to God, and he wanted to know what he should do in the face of this mutiny, in the face of this rebellion. And he finally answered both Korach and Datan by saying, if you die a normal death, then uh, I will know that the Lord has not forgiven you, that the Lord has taken my side. If the earth will open in a fantastic way and you will fall into the ground, then I will know that I am vindicated. And so it was, there was an earthquake and uh, uh, they were all destroyed. Of course, uh, you can explain this if you want to, that uh, there were earthquakes in those days that the important thing here is not what happened, but when it happened. The earth had to open at the right time. Uh, like the miracle of the crossing the Red Sea, it could be interpreted as a low tide, as a sandbar. And the miracle 
was not so much as what happened as when it happened at the right time when they were forced uh, to cross the Red Sea and achieve victory. Let's talk about Torah. Torah in our tradition is the image of the trouble maker. He's the image of the uh, uh, the rebel, of the demagogue, uh, of the person of power who is against everything and opposes everybody. He's against authority. He's a person who will tell you if you say it's night, it's day. If it's day, he'll tell you it's night. If the color is black, it's white. And if the color is white, it's black. I'll never forget in my first pulpit when I was a young rabbi, uh, there was a member uh, who would come every Saturday morning always complaining, always criticizing, always finding fault. Rabbi, your sermons are too long. Rabbi, your two minutes of sermons are too short. I don't like the cantor. I don't like the congregation. And I finally said to him, pardon me. I really don't know you. What have I done to offend you? And he said, oh, oh, it's nothing personally, he said. I just dislike all rabbis. I dislike all rabbis. There are some people who dislike, dislike uh, everybody. Uh, in the Perke Avot, in the Sowings of the Fathers, we have an interesting paragraph about a machloka, a controversy. Our rabbis ask, what is the controversy, L'Shem Shemaim, in heaven, the spiritual controversy? And they answer the controversy, the Machloket, of Hillel and Shammai, two great scholars uh, who argued about spiritual causes, about Jewish traditions, about ethics and morality. This was a spiritual, an intellectual controversy. And what is a controversy, Lo L'Shem Shemaim, not in the name of heaven, and the answer is the conversi, controversy of Korach and his followers. Didn't say Korach and Moses, Korach and his followers. The rabbis explained that nothing united Korach and his followers except they were against uh, Moses, against uh, they uh, 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 believed that uh, they could succeed in their mutiny. Uh, the Korach is always ready to criticize, always ready to torment. I can do better. I can harass you. Uh, Pharaoh met uh, the people like Korach even before he crossed the Red Sea. According to the Bible, when Moses had the theophany at Mount Sinai at, uh, in, in the wilderness, and God told him that he was to go back to Pharaoh and tell him to let his people go. When he went to Pharaoh, even before the 10 plagues, and said to Pharaoh, let my people go. I want to accompany them into the desert and worship God. Pharaoh was incensed. Pharaoh reduced uh, straw in their daily uh, uh, giving. And the people came to Moses and complained. And they were incensed. They, Sarah, they said, Pharaoh has now reduced the input of straw. How in the world can we build the pyramids? Uh, and then they came to the Red Sea before they crossed the Red Sea. The Korahs among some complained. They said, we'll never make it. Let us go back to Egypt. We had food. We had security. We had a place to stay. And then later when they were in the wilderness, when Moses climbed to Mount Sinai, the theophany of the Ten Commandments. He was there for 40 days, and he returned to the people. And lo and behold, the Korahs there had instigated the people to build a golden calf. And Moses found them dancing around the golden calf, worshiping the idol, and he punished them. And then again in the wilderness, many, many times, uh, uh, the people were starving. They wanted food. They were thirsty. They wanted water. And the Korahs and the population castigated Moses and criticized Moses. And Moses uh, said to God, uh, destroy me. I cannot lead this people. And God always said, no, no, I want you uh, to stay. I want you to stay. Uh, the episode of the uh, hitting of the rock 
and a punishment of Moses in the wilderness. God said to Moses, who wanted water, he said, strike, uh, speak to the rock, and there will be water to feed the people. Moses lost his temper, and instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock, and for that he was punished. The most dire of punishments, he was not entitled to cross over into the promised land. Imagine his whole career, 40 years of leading the children of Israel in the wilderness, and he couldn't cross over into the promised land. He put him, God put Moses on top of the mountain and said, you can see the land, you can taste it, you can feel it, but you're not going to cross over. Of course, we wonder why this dire, severe punishment. The answer, of course, is with, uh, with leadership goes responsibility. Moses had a responsibility to follow the command of God. And so we see that Korah is every is in generation. And the Bible tells us today, B'nai Korah lo metu. B'nai Korah lo metu, the children of Korah, the descendants of Korah have not disappeared. And, and you wonder, what does that mean? They were all in the work. They were all destroyed. And our rabbis tell us there is still in every generation, there is a Korah. There is a Korah who will criticize, a Korah who will take over, a Korah who will make uh, miserable. There's a Korah in every family. There's a Korah in the community. There's a Korah in the synagogue. There is a Korah in business. There is a Korah in government. There is always a Korah in our midst. Always one who will criticize. Always one who will make trouble. Always one who will take over. Always one who will rebel, who will dissent. An anarchist who is against unity and against harmony. Uh, as we are living today in these days of protest, we can sympathize mildly, mightily with the cause of the protest. We can speak against white racism. We can speak real racism. We can speak against white supremacy. We can uh, speak against police brutality. That's all fine and good. And this is part of Judaism and part of the American tradition. But we cannot condone uh, the violence. We cannot condone the looting and the firing and the damaging and the violence. And, and these are Korahs amongst the protesters. These are the Korahs who protest by killing, by firing, by looting, by stealing. What are we going to do about the Korahs in our society, in our midst? Uh, there will be no earthquake to swallow them. I'm sure there will not be no violence against them. But we can learn something from the coronavirus virus in our midst. We can isolate them. We can uh, uh, quarantine them. Uh, uh, I, I wish there were a, uh, a vac vac vaccine which would destroy uh, the plague that is confronting us, but a vaccine which symbolically could destroy them too. They can't be tested, but we can be on the lookout for all the Korahs in our society, the Korahs who would destroy, who would complain, who would contritize, who would worry. As we say in our tradition, Ose Shalom Bibromav, may the Lord who maketh peace to the heavens, may he, may he make peace for us and for all mankind in America, in Israel, and in every state and country of the world. Shalom, peace. And let us say, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Rabbi, thank you once again for your wonderful wisdom. We wish you and your family a Shabbat Shalom. Very pleasant time, very pleasant day, and a wonderful quiet weekend. Take care. We'll see you very soon. Thank you for your hospitality.